Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Valued Pursuit. I am Patrick Davitt here with my co-host, Tyler Stegman. How are we doing, Tyler? Awesome, man. Super excited. Look at this setup now. Hi, Every Matt. episode's getting better. Very excited. Camera quality, hey, audio, everything. That's all we can ask Lighting. for is exactly. every day to continually improve. So exactly. very excited today. Uh, we have uh, always have wonderful things to talk about with each other and can go on for hours and hours and hours. There's only so much time in the day and everyone has the same amount of time. We have to allocate it to certain things. And that's kind of what we wanted to talk today about, which is what we do with our time and our daily rituals and things like that, AKA also known as habits. So we titled this talk, what? Valued habits. So Pat and I are going to kind of go back and forth, talk about uh, some of the key habits that we feel will help and serve all of you guys and kind of specify on the reason why we feel those are important and why they can really elevate your current situation, current life and current pursuit for your best version in life. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I don't know why I'd love looking up. I mean, I'm a quote guy, so I look up quotes all the time, but I love the definitions. And one of the things I did in the last one is, is look at the definition. So if you're if you're cool with it, I'll start us off with what is the definition of habits? We, we hear habits all the time. and We're going to talk about some of the experts that have written books, things that we found and, and, and other things related to that. But when we say what is a habit, here is what the Webster's Dictionary uh, definition says. Habit as a noun, a settled or regular tendency or practice, especially one that is hard to give up. And I think that is the key that can set us on this conversation. And we each have our own notes and we combine notes and things like that. But this concept of, you know, a continual uh, repeated act or tendency, one that is very hard to give up. And I think that, again, that is the key that it is very hard to give up, but we then have to w get into the concept of, okay, well, what is it that is hard to give up? Do you have, because most of the time you think of, oh, what do I do on a daily day? My habitual routine. And it's okay. Well, that routine and those habits, they can either be good they can be bad. And again, we have to then define, well, good towards what, bad towards what, et cetera. And that is, a de that is determined by where are you going? What direction are you facing? What are, is the destination you're trying to get to your goals and things like that? So what do you think about that definition? Yeah, I really agree with that. Um, I think what you're ultimately saying too, is like we're, we were just talking about before we started recording that, uh, self-reflection, right. And, uh, it's not practice is perfect. We hear far too often, but practice is permanent. So whatever you're doing ultimately over time, you're going to become very good at. And is that serving you or is it not serving you is kind of the first question you ask yourself. Um, and then kind of getting into the whole uh, reflective practice, right? Looking at if this is not helping me, what can I change? And then taking action and being able to implement something that's better. So uh, habits are very good, but then they can also be very detrimental as well. So we have to kind of, I think we need to analyze if it's going to help us or if it's not going to help us eventually end up where we want to be. So, and that kind of gets into um, listening to Atomic Habits lately and mentioning how we can have outcome-based habits and we can have identity-based habits. With outcome-based habits, you know, we're always going to get to a goal. We're going to fall short, you know, if we just get to our goal and then we don't have something that relies with our identity and the person that we wish to be in the future. So, I think that if we have identity based habits, it's something that it's a lot, it allows us to like refine our system versus our goals and allows us to continually pursue fulfillment in life. And with outcome based habits, you know, we're going to get to that goal that we set. And then, you know, we, we may lose motivation. We may not become consistent. So if we're, if we're really truly, as you always say, trying to think of what the person that we want to be in life would be doing right now and live by that every single day, I think that that's, ultimately what we all should be chasing in life. So, Yeah. And that's awesome because I think a big part of that would be you have the identity habits and then you have outcome habits. And one of the things that we have to talk about is this concept of you can look into mindfulness, all these different things and the whole, the, the general word there is awareness. So if it's, oh, identity habits, a big part of that is, well, are you aware of your current identity? Like, how do you define yourself? How do you define uh, the specific 
person that you are striving to be out of the you know relatively infinite number of possibilities of who you can become so you have to define that same thing with outcome it's well what are the what outcome did i arrive at currently here's where i am how did i get here and where do i want to go all of that requires awareness and that requires thinking and a big part of that then gets into this whole concept of habits and the what you do on a daily basis ultimately leads to you know who you become i mean my gosh i have so many random quotes that discuss this general concept but getting back to what you said and we talked a little bit about it before where you know you even were the one who brought it up where you said oh everyone always says practice pra practice makes perfect and it's most of the experts that you listen to will say well you know you get into the 10,000 hour thing and and whatever it is but in general I, I, most people tend to disagree with that concept oh it's not practice makes perfect you know you said practice makes permanent and it's and it's like well it depends on what that permanence is i think of it as a, a you're, it's almost like a, a general statue that which you are practicing is every rep is of whatever it is you're doing is like a carving away and etching on that statue of who you are becoming so yeah that permanence is well is it a good statue is it a bad statue what's the product of your continual practice and i said before if you ask my daughter you know what does practice make she'll tell you what i told her which is what i got from les brown where he says practice makes improvement and the concept is that's what practice is you know uh, Jim Rohn says repetition is the mother of learning so the concept is over and over and over again and the, the question is what is it that you are improving and again that goes back to the concept of awareness I think and we think of I th what I have come to realize and most of it's through all the readings and listenings and things like that where I'm taking a conscious effort of trying to pay attention to my habits and then you get into you know James Clear atomic habits and it's he gets into the whole concept of what he means by that but the the idea is you know every breath that you take every thought that you have every movement and action they are the many of them if not most of them are habits and it just and again it's something that i struggle with on a daily basis but i came to a point where it was okay you read books like this you listen to other experts and it's or you get to that point where you say you know what yeah i want to pursue more value in my life and maybe i need to reinvent myself and a big part of that of awareness is well let me take stock of what what are the habits that I'm doing? So you, you, you know, a big part of that is lists. Jim Rohn, he's probably my favorite, uh, like personal development, self-development uh, speakers that I listen to. I listen to him all the time. And a big thing he says is don't rely on your brain as a filing cabinet, you know, write that stuff down. That's why most of the experts tell you to journal. That's why you and I have all these notes. It's why we write down. That's why when you're in class or you're at a meeting or you're, you're reading a book, it's if you hear something and it reflects, especially, you know, relates related to what you want to do. And maybe it triggers something in you of, huh, that's a bad habit that I have, or that's a good habit that I'd like, you know, you have to write that stuff down. And I think that's the big message of, I think that's the biggest takeaway that if, if I could give anyone today, it would be, you know, you are, what, what, what's the, the Aristotle quote? Uh, we, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is a habit and not a single act. So a big part of that is to figure out what you would like to do and then just become aware of all that you do in a daily, on a daily basis. And, and you, I mean, my gosh, in your field as a PT, it's, there's only so many injuries that you probably see that make up, you know, 95, if not even 99% of, of, of all the, the injuries and ailments that you treat. And the concept is, well, hey, I, I'm not asking you to re, you know, go out and buy this fancy equipment. I'm not asking you to completely upend your life and change and do this. You're, you're probably just asking individuals, hey, just start adding like this one stretch, you know, you have to take stock is it 
is it bringing you towards improvement of whatever your injury is? And then in general life, you know, bringing you towards, hey, do I want to get stronger? Do I want to get smarter? You know, do I want to get better at basketball, learn how to play the piano, learn, you know, we can get into all that, but you have this whole concept of, you know, going towards a good habit, going away, you know, pulling away from a bad habit. So I think that awareness, for me, that big takeaway is this concept of awareness. Like step one, you need to realize, hey, we just said what a habit is, something that's really hard to break. And then a big part of it is identifying those habits, like identify your day, write down your day. So I think a good thing to talk about, like a good physical therapist is someone who's aware, that's a strong word, like you just said, with their patient's goals, right? Their primary symptomatic complaint. I always ask people, is this the same? Is So is it better, right? Is it the same or is it worse? You really can kind of hone in and figure out, is this helping what we're trying to help right now, right? Is this making it better? Is it making it worse or is it the same? Is it doing nothing? And constantly asking that question. And again, like you said, you just start with one thing. Is it making it better? Is it worse or is it the same? And over time, if is it not, if it's not, then you can change it, right? You can refine it, like you just said. Um, or if it is, then you you know keep going and progress it, and so on and so forth. Uh, what you said before as well, I think the big thing with habits as well is that over time, these things uh, you need to be consistent with them. So thinking about my head, a, a thing that I kind of want to talk about from Atomic Habits again as well. I'm really loving this that. You said James Clear, the author, uh, was mentioning you're in a room with an ice cube and it's freezing. So it's 25 degrees and every couple of seconds it goes up a degree. So 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, and the ice cube starts to melt. And the point is, is that these things take time, right? It's not going to just, you know, you'd start doing something and a couple of days on the road, you're going to see massive change. It's over time that the these things are going to serve you and you have to do them consistently. Like we just said before, uh, to, to see massive change in your life. And I love, I love that. Cause it's so powerful. Cause it's kind of, you know, what he said is it's not that all the subsequent degrees that it increased were a waste. It's, you know, it took until it got to the point where it changes from freezing for you to see the change and for you to see the improvement and for you to, again, going back to physical therapy, these things take time. You're not going to just feel better instantaneously when you first come in and we work with you. It's going to take a couple weeks, a month, you know, a couple months, maybe even up to a year, depending on how severe it is, if you're a post-operative patient or whatever it may be. So that kind of goes back to uh, doing the right things on a consistent basis over your lifespan, like you said, which really ultimately leads to who you're going to be in life and writing those things down too, staying organized. I think organization is a huge thing. I have a calendar up on my wall in front on the other side of the screen. And I have a vision board too. And I think the two things that I could recommend, like you just said, Pat, are writing things down. I know how my week is. I know where I have to be at different times every single day. I know when I can schedule things with certain people. I know Ryan Holiday talks about a lot in stoicism, saying no. Saying no is a very, very powerful thing to be able to say no to people. It's hard to say no. And not saying no in you know, an uh, arrogant way, but saying no that I just don't have time for that right now. Because if you say you do have time for it, well, you're giving up time for something else that may be more important for you in your pursuit of fulfillment in life. Um, and the vision board is kind of, once you get all of those things squared away and you're more organized, uh, like Pat was saying before, really kind of trying to define who you are. You know, and who you are is what you should be writing down on that vision board because that's your vision of who you're chasing in life. So I have all of the things that I want to do in my life, all the different businesses and ideas that I have and, and we're, you know, Pat and I are working together with and things that I want to do in the spring and things that I'm doing on a you know bi-weekly basis, things that I'm doing on a weekly basis, notes that I've written down that I live by, affirmations is another huge thing that Pat and I both live by. I always have a quote up on the board in front of me. The current one right now is what do you have to lose? Um, you know, I think that's super powerful, powerful in itself. Uh, Goggins talks about, which I wanted to mention before we'll get to, but this, and, and James Clear in Atomic Habits mentions it a lot, you know, failing, 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 failing. He always talks about when we don't get something right, but Goggins says that it's, you know, it's not failures, it's attempts. And I love that because in the physical therapy world, I'm kind of on a rant right now, but if we have a spinal cord patient that hasn't, or not even a spinal cord patient, stroke patient, whatever it may be, and they haven't been able to walk since their, you know, episode that happened to them or their event or change in, you know, their current status, you know, the, all those subsequent attempts for us to get them up and be able to, you know, help with them with the limb advancement and take one step forward and help them get their gait cycle back to just being able to take five steps. Those weren't all failures, right? They were all attempts. 
over and over and over and over again. And it goes back to the ice cube example is all the things that we do on a daily basis are going to lead to that huge, massive change in an event that, you know, we're striving for. And we're, and we're trying to, like we talked about before, live by that identity to help us get to that point, not just an outcome. Because once we get to the first step, well, guess what? We need to take the second step. And if we only plan for the first, we're not ready for the second. Right. So yeah, my God, very powerful. Yeah, absolutely. There's so many, like this is where I'm taking notes because I'm not relying on my head to sort through what you just said and what I want to reflect on. So you have to write this stuff down. That's, that's what we're, what we're saying here, man. There's so many different things. I love the ice cube concept. And there's two things that I think of when I think of that ice cube concept. And one of them is it's going to take time. I have like a random note that I wrote down. Don't rush the process, trust the process. And mm. I, we've talked, I think it was on the last last podcast where we said, you know, you should love the, pro learn to love the process. And it's, well, that process isn't just, you know, when you're in the muck and the thick of it, if it's a, a 20 minute, you know, hit workout, or if it's just this crazy, uh, you know, long workout, if it's a report, it's no, in the totality, there's 24 hours in a day, it's trust the process of who you're becoming with what you are doing and accomplishing in that day, you know, a single day is, is all that we have, but with that ice cube. So it takes time. Don't rush the process, trust the process. You know, it, you, you, you what is it? The expression there is don't put, you know, uh, the cart before the horse, you know, you're not able to, to see the forest through the trees. That's sort of a, an opposite one where you're, you're, you're doing the opposite. So you're focusing on the trees in front of you instead of trying to, to say, why can't I build this in, you know, giant life that I'm trying to build and do, why can't I learn this song on the piano or why can't I learn this language or why can't I get this done right now? Why isn't my waist dropping five inches overnight? Things like that. So from that perspective, what I also then think about is along those lines, you know, an ice cube takes time to melt, where think of that ice cube as a whole as your potential. And the idea is, well, here's where I am. And then over time, you don't do the good habits and the daily things that you're supposed to do. And most of the time, here's where it's interesting. We talk about awareness. We talk about writing things down. But at the end of the day, I do think a majority of people, myself included, we know what we should be doing and we know what we should not be doing. But that's where I think those affirmations that you talked about is, well, you got to write that stuff down. You got to throw that and shove it in your face every day. You know, provide the input of what should I, what should I be doing every single day, all day. And it's going to be annoying at first, but eventually it's not going to be annoying because you're not going to need those messages and things like that over time. It's just going to be ingrained in your brain because your brain's going to be like, all right, I get it. You want me to do this. You want me to, you know, put, you want me to put my clothes out the night before I go to work. You want me to do the, all of those things. Your brain is going to eventually get to the point where it's, oh, all right, well, that's, that's simple. But I think part of that concept that I was getting to was, hey, as that ice cube, you know, starts to melt as your potential, it's, oh, well, I could see how eventually it's, well, how did I get to this point? And it's, well, you didn't get to this point overnight. Like I'm, I'm struggling. I'm overweight. I'm out of shape. I'm not doing the things I want to be doing. I'm eating cookies. I'm eating all this junk. I'm drinking. So et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, whatever it is. And it's, well, you didn't do that overnight. That took time, just like the ice cube. You know, uh, what's the one I always said? I did a p post randomly back in the day. It had to do with, you know, like habits are like a steel cable. You know, when you look at a steel cable, it's, it's a cable, but it's many, 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 many little, you know, strands interwoven together. So you have a bad habit, which is, hey, bad habits are really hard to break, but you can break one little thing at a time and eventually you're gonna unravel and unwind that steel cable. Same thing with good habits. They don't happen overnight, like the ice cube analogy. But 
good habits, you know, and where you want to get to are like that steel cable where every day you have to just weave a new little cable and eventually you'll get to a point where you've woven enough cables for those good habits that now that cable is complete and a steel cable once it's complete you know is like almost indefinitely strong it's really hard to break so those things take time i think part of the the one is this concept of you talked about you know your patients it might be a spinal patient patient uh, i was part of a research study this fall where i was running the the aerobic capacity vo2 max test on uh, stroke rehab patients and you know it's wild because uh, i've mentioned i don't think i mentioned my nephew i mentioned my, my nephew uh, gabe uh, love him to death just a, a born with this amazing talent but he does everything he can i, I test highest vo2 max i've ever tested in my lab 82.0 and it's just so cool to watch. But you have someone like that, and that's, look at the potential he has and what we're trying to accomplish. And you look at like elite lifters and things like that. And then I go into the lab and it's, oh, well, this individual is walking at, you know, 0.8 miles per hour and we're raising the treadmill, you know, 2% every few minutes. And it's, well, that's gonna bring them to their max in, you know, eight minutes. And it's, oh, well, like it's all relative. I think that's a thing that we lose perspective on. And a big part of that is, you know, this is where it's, oh, you need to focus on you. And again, that's kind of a common message that, that we see. But have some perspective within yourself. And then, hey, us as practitioners, that's like one of our main jobs where we are learning so much about our fields and we have to apply it to individuals. But you need to have perspective and learn to treat individuals like individuals. I'm not going to treat a stroke rehab, you know, a cardio respiratory fitness program the same way I will my nephew, who's, you know, an elite college runner, uh, you know, who's finishing his VO2 max test at like 10 miles an hour at like a 10% grade. And he's just bounding you know up the treadmill like it's all a matter of perspective so part of that is to take that perspective getting back to to sort of wrap up this my rant uh is you know and it gets back to that concept of you know don't compare yourself this is jordan peterson's 12 rules for life do not compare yourself to who someone else is today but rather who you were yesterday you know and the idea is you know the race in life the battle in life you know the habitual uh, daily activities in life are you versus you when you show up yeah competition is great and all those different things and markers and group sessions and accountability all those things are great but at the end of the day most of your day is you with your own thoughts you with yourself so from that perspective of take stock of who you are where you were yesterday where you want to go tomorrow but figure out you know Today is the day that I have. I we might have said before, but it's one, you know, like what, what are the habits that I'm doing, you know, right now? Like I'm constantly paying attention to my posture. It's, oh, I'm watching these videos and it's, well, should I have, you know, anterior or posterior pelvic tilt? And, you know, it, it, everyone's going to be relative, but the concept is uh, Eric Thomas. Now, no opportunities wasted. It's mm. what you do in every moment of the day is going to add up to who you become, but it takes that awareness think of yourself as like a single entity you are your own relative perspective individual and you have to treat yourself that way you know and and you have to understand that yes uh, what is it like goggins said you know these failure you know our attempts not trying is the failure and then when you know that's what he said and then the other concept is you know the only way to guarantee failure is to give up so the idea is you have to figure out what you want to do and write those things down figure out what you are doing that you want to stop doing write those things down and then like the ice cube analogy it's going to take time you have to give it time how much time i don't know you know we can give, we can look at stats. That's what the stats world tells us. It tells us how to make recommendations, how to diagnose. It tells us how to predict. We can, those are just estimates. We have better estimates, worse. The concept is write stuff down, pay attention, 
And oh my gosh, I mean, you can get into the specifics of specific habits and things like that. And a big part of what we're doing today is talking about the totality of, you know, habitual awareness and figuring out what it is that you want to do and then writing that stuff down and then, you know, going to work on yourself, going to work on your habits. So. So a big thing in uh, the physical therapy world is the word saliency and saliency is basically just talking about making something specific to in which it relates to. So as you were just talking about, I was thinking about smart goals. So specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. So you were, you were saying how one thing for, you know, an individual may be completely different for another in terms of their, you know, intensity level, their experience, uh, you know, what they're even doing. Are they running endurance? Are they, are they a sprinter? Um, you know, are they an Olympic weightlifter, powerlifter, so on and so forth, whatever it may be, are they in business? Are they in, you know, the health field, whatever it is, it always applies. Everyone has different specific saliency to what, to what they're trying to achieve. Um, and then I really wanted to talk about too, like integrity and confidence. I hear so much stuff about, Oh, how do I build confidence? And, you know, I listen to a lot of, um, information from Andy Frisella from uh, first form. And he talks about confidence is by doing things right. Going out, getting experience. Like you just said, through your pursuit of life, like we always talk about here on the podcast and the only way that you're going to gain confidence. And like Patrick was saying, learn what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Like we we're just talking about before with physical therapy, is it better, worse or the same is by doing it right like Goggin says, like you said before, it's, it's attempts, it's not failures, but what's, what's failing is not doing it right. Not taking the first step. Like Jocko says, like none of us, you know, our bodies are, we've been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. Like Ryan holiday talks about in the book, discipline is destiny. Like you have to manifest your machine. You, like we talked about in the last episode, you're the CEO of your body. You have to control your desires for things that are going to hurt you and your your habits that don't serve you. You have to write these things down and surround yourself with it. He talks about it all the time. The goal is to write these things down and and to read them and to make them part of your life on a daily basis, like Patrick said, because ultimately that's what forms a habit, but that's the reinforcement that it's going to take for you to control your conscience, for you to control your subconscious, and for you to end up at your destination and what you choose. So I think the biggest thing to take away from this is not doing anything, not taking the first step. You're never going to get to the second step. So you have to take action, right? Taking actions, how you're going to build confidence and confidence you're going to gain in which you, the experiences that you partake in. And we talked about before reflective practice, right? Practice is permanence. If you're doing something that you could be doing better, you need to be making, you need to be writing these things down taking inventory of, you know, did this serve me or did it not? And then being able to, to implement a change to be able to get to the next level and ascend to the steps of life, so to speak. Um, and, you know, having integrity, right? Like how you do one thing is ultimately how you do everything. You know, people really don't believe in this concept, but it is so true. Every day I go to work, and I'm doing 101%. I'm never slacking my notes. I'm writing. My notes are grammatically correct. I read over my sentences and make sure everything makes sense. Everything's in there as specific as it can be realistically for how much time I have. You know, we have to see eight to 10 people a day. I always see probably eight people. I've never seen nine or 10. It's quality over quantity, right? Like you get what you put into life. So, um, like you talk about this all the time. If you see a piece of trash on the ground, pick it up, put it in the garbage. Like it's the little things. It's that's, I think the another really strong point to mention is that getting organized on the little things in your life, right? You got to control the little variables to be able to control the big variables. And the more things that you control and the more things that you, what I live by now and what I want to make a shirt about together with is do what you say you're going to do. You say you're going to do something, have the integrity and the the willpower to follow through with it. That's going to build confidence, right? Small wins are what are going to lead to larger wins. And when you say you're going to do something and you follow up, follow up with it and do it, the, your conscious mind knows when you when you write something down. When when I say Pat, I'm going to do this, or when Pat tells me he's going to do something, I know he's going to do it because it's been proven through actions, right? Like actions speak louder than words. So that's I think that's to to try and not go on too much of a rant. I think. You have to take action. That's what it comes down to. I think that's the biggest point. Yeah, and, and I think the action in which you take, last thing, that you you will be able to reflect and improve and, and continue your pursuit in life, right? 
because you know it's never going to be perfect we're all going to make mistakes that's how we learn there was another thing i want to mention real quick before i forget i saw this morning um school and <laughs> we might butt heads here because you're a professor uh school <laughs> school uh teaches you lessons and gives you a test right but life gives you a test and you learn lessons so i think it's powerful i think the the the, the main point is like jocko says you've got to take a step and you got to take the second step. You got to take the third step. And you're going to learn through that experience. You're going to reflect. You're going to write things down. You're going to have affirmations to keep you motivated. You're going to have good mentors like yourself, Pat, someone who I aspire to be some someone like one day. And, you know, and you're going to surround yourself in a, in a circle of strong-minded individuals like yourself. You're, you are the product of the five people that you spend the most time with. So go ahead. Say what you're going to say. No, that's super powerful, man. And that confidence and integrity. I think a big part of that, I, everything you just said, the word that I wrote down was trust, you know, and my time working in like high level football as a nutritionist, things like that. One of the big things is, you know, trust, do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. And the concept there is also trust of other people i trust that you're going to do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it and the more you do those things so it's hey you had the trust that when i say i'm going to do something for you or i'm going to do it but it's part of our relationship and it's going to impact you that's one thing i think the other big part is you need to learn to trust yourself and part of that confidence and trust in yourself is going to happen the more you get into orienting yourself figuring out your values which we talked about and you know pursuing those and figuring out the daily habits and pursuing changes in those things i wrote down two things where i i, I had one where i said hey you can have two different types of habits and then i, for, I was randomly thinking about that and the concept is and this is where and you know what i've heard James Clear talk about it, but it made me think of atomic habits. You know, when you look at like atomic, super, super small, an atom, but then you can have an atomic bomb type, you know, where it can then go go large. I, I wrote down, you have small and big. So you have micro habits, like in the nutrition and fitness world, we talk about, you know, periodization. You have, you know, macro cycles, micro cycles in the nutrition world. You have, you know, uh, uh, macro and, and micro you get vitamins and minerals and, and carbs and things like that. So you have macro, micro, and then macro. So you're small daily. And this is where I think I'm much better at the macro where you give me a challenge. Like yesterday, uh, I don't remember what it was. It was the other day I was doing grading and it's the end of the semester and I have a treadmill desk. And I said, I try and get a marathon at the end of every semester. And I was only at like 23 miles or 24 miles, but I was walking for like eight hours just grading. And I then came home and I still had more grading to do. And it's why I could sit at the, the desk. I could sit on the couch and things like that. But I said, no, I have a treadmill in the basement. Let me, I have a makeshift, makeshift desk. So I said, I'm just going to keep walking. And I submitted grades like really late and I was working and it was 12 hours and I walked a 50 K. So it was like 31 point, 31.07. So I did like 31.10. And that's, I would consider like a macro it's, oh, I want to join the gym. I want to you know, stop drinking soda. I want to drink less coffee. You know, I don't have coffee and I have tea. So I think those are more macro. I'm really good at those. And a big part of it is recognition. So I'm really good. You, and that's where the trust, I trust myself that if I set out a big goal, I'm going to accomplish that goal. I wanted to run a hundred miler before I turned 40, you know, sign up for Eastern States, 100 trained for it, ran it 34 hours, 21 minutes, hardest thing. One of the pretty much the hardest thing I've ever done that's a macro goal that's a the, the the habits related to that are in my opinion on the macro scale for some people maybe that's not it and then part of me is oh it's those micro things it's those daily little habits like brushing your teeth setting the clothes out you know where it, it, this is where like for my wife it's oh am i emptying the the sink before we go to bed am i setting my coffee the night before those are like little tiny micro things where am i putting my phone where you know am i organizing my desk did i put the chapstick back in the top uh, zippered you know compartment of my back those little micro things that's for me it, a part of i think is this identification of hey what do you need to work on 
you have macro and then you have micro what are the habits and then you need to identify those because the macro ones the larger macro means you know bigger micro or the smaller ones the macro ones are probably more oriented with very tangible specific goals and then i think of the micro as you know what type of person do you want to be on a daily basis not the accomplishments that you want to do although these micro habits are going to help you and orient you on that pathway and that pursuit but i like that general distinction and thinking of all of those concepts where everything is essentially you know daily you know the whole concept of habits habitual things that you do on a daily basis you take cognitive stock and what one thing that jim Rohn always talks about that I, I wrote down he has this one saying and he says it differently every time and he gives it in almost all of his speeches where he says you don't have to live the next five years you know of your life like you lived the last five you can rip up that script however if you don't change you can probably predict how the next five of your five years of your life are going to be just look at the last five you know and then he says you know direction determines destination you can't change your destination overnight but you can change the direction that direction is going to be those little habits what is it that you're doing you know on a daily basis so the concept that i always give when i'm counseling working in nutrition students you know small changes can lead to big results that's the concept of you know uh, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step you know typically one two thousand steps is about a mile okay well that's two thousand of individual steps combined you know if i always use like brushing your teeth but when you're brushing your teeth suppose you do you know if you have it's 20 seconds or if it's 50 seconds or 100 seconds it's well those are individual seconds it's that whole concept of you know the whole is greater than the sum of its parts but you can't get rid of the individual parts otherwise you won't have a whole so those macro and those micro a big part of it is to figure out what do i want to focus on where where do i want to go who do i want to be and then that's going to help you figure out which of those daily habits that you probably need to figure out which ones are helping you which ones are hurting you and again part of it is like that concept of you i just finished the book winning by tim grover and it's, it's, it's i put it up there with from a inspirational uh, motivational like with the goggins can't hurt me book I, mean, just, I can't wait to i literally want to go and re-listen to it but in a big in it he talks about winning doesn't care who you are you know and the strength coach uh, at, at Rutgers, he has a big arnold schwarzenegger poster he's stretching out his arms and it says you can have results or you can have excuses you can't have both you know and that tim grover winning doesn't care who you are you know winning is selfish so his concept was like at some point you need to be selfish you need to take stock of who you are and figure out what you're doing because the more you help yourself the more you'll be able to help others you know right. and and yeah i mean that that word trust and it gets back to you know our previous the second podcast about values and in our name you know what are the values that you want to you know carry with you and embody as you know who you are and ultimately those things ref are reflected in your habits and then your daily habits are going to reflect whether or not you are living up to those values you know nobody cares what you say they care what you do yeah we care what you say from a certain perspective but when it comes to the manifestation of accomplishing things in your life you know if you want to bench 300 pounds if you would just want to walk a mile or or accomplish and finish a 5k that's great and there's tons and tons of data to say that writing that stuff down telling other people signing up for the race signing up for the gym membership all those things help keep you accountable but at the end of at the end of the day you still have to do the work you know that's where this whole motivation and things like that but uh what was the one i just read bruce lee said will you know be willing be being willing is not enough you must do and it's that action but awareness is the big again i started with this and i'm going to end with this where i think awareness is the main thing make lists write it down shove it in your life and put these lists 
everywhere. Put your daily habits, what you want to improve, what you don't want to improve. And then my last point, and then I'll let you <laughs> take the floor and, and finish up, would be this concept of all of this is reflecting, like uh, Jim Rohn said, if you know, you don't, you can rip up the script. You Direction determines destination. You can change your direction overnight. The concept of there, the big word is change. So my big takeaway is for these daily habits, macro and micro, you need to identify them. But if you want to change, there's only two ways that I believe you can change. You need to change your mindset, which has to do with all that's around you and the input that you're, the mindset that you have, and then mindset and then environment. If you want to stop eating cookies, don't buy cookies. Don't go near cookies. Don't drive by a cookie store. Things like that your environment is going to change. And like you said, those that you hang around with, you know, people are constantly saying you're going to make within a few thousand dollars of the five people that you spend the most time with, you know, like friends and, and things like that. And, you know, your habits are shaped by your background, all those different things. Yes. But right now, what's it shaped by? Your mindset and your environment. And a big part of that is this concept, a quote, a final quote I'll leave you with. Discipline, it's Abraham Lincoln. Discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you want most. But it's, it's, it's way easier to choose the, the bad habit, that which you f makes you feel good right now, as opposed to what you really want. But it makes it even harder to do the things that get you to where you, what you really want if you don't know what that is. So you have to identify it, write down your tangible goals This is where you work with a trainer and things like that. And it's, you know, as a PT, as a strength coach, a nutritionist, it's, Hey, here's our six month goals. You know, you get into periodization. It's like, all right, here's our, you know, macro cycle. We're going to break it down into months, mesocycles, and then we're going to look at weeks. Hey, what can we accomplish by through individual practice, habitual daily routines and rituals every single day, that's going to build up to a week, month, et cetera. So. That's what I got. So much to dissect, so much good stuff. I feel like all these, so obviously all the episodes are going to relate. It makes sense because that's what Value Pursuit stands for. But you talked about last, uh, I think it was the first episode, last episode, I'm not sure, second, about the oxygen mass in the plane when, you, when it's coming down, right? And you mentioned the concept of like, to some degree, you know, you're being, you're being selfless in the beginning and you, and you're, you're, you're it's kind of more about you so you can improve yourself. I have a quote on my computer here that's the uh, continuous refinement and endless improvement. So the goal is to make yourself a better individual so you can serve more people and help more people because you can only help people with the things you've done in life, right? Like you have to be at a certain point in life through your experiences and all the things we've just talked about to be able to provide value right? To people like we have, we've done things, right? So we we're able to sit here and talk and explain through our experiences and things that have and haven't worked for us to provide that value to other people that are listening. Um, so it gets to the point of what I was going to say with the reason that I said that with the oxygen mask come down in the plane, planes going down, don't put the oxygen mask on the other people, put it on yourself so you can help the other people. The concept is, is that, um, I think it's James Clear again. I really, I'm really loving this atomic habits, but he talks about how we're like the only species, if you look at nature, nature's so, I think actually maybe a bit, might've been Rogan actually that said it. Um, if you look at nature, like nature just does not care. You go out into the the woods, like when you're running out there and you're recording your videos, when you do your, your TikTok videos, or, you know, you go out on a good hike or you're driving to work and you, you're you looking at the, the foliage and the, you know, in the forest. And it's like, like you talked about the tree concept in the last couple episodes too. And it's like, a tree does everything it can on a daily basis to grow as tall as possible, like you said, for the roots to be, I think James Clear mentioned too, like in uh, bamboo trees, like the these these trees, you don't see them for like months on end, you know, even up to like a year, however long it takes for them to grow. These roots are like hundreds and hundreds of feet in the ground and they take time to 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 grow and spread out and develop. And then they pop out of the ground and they, and they're hundreds, you know, however tall they are, they're, they boom over everything else. And they're, the, the concept is, is that, you know, we're the only species like nature that, you know, every single day, nature is trying to improve itself. It's trying to survive. It's trying to do its best. And like you said before, we know, we know what we need to do. All of us know what we need to do. 
this is our like the platform here, all the value we're providing to people. Like Gary Vee says all the time, I'm going to say the same thing over and over and over and over again to you. But it's a matter of for you to do something with it, right? For you, like the whole, you lead a horse to water, but you can't force him to drink it. All this stuff is here for you guys to do something with it. And for Pat and me as well, we can have all the excuses we want in the world. And we always do. But are we going to, like Jocko says, take the step, take the second step and carry forward and not have the excuse, have the action to have the result for the experience for a pursuit in life. And I just think that it's so profound that, you know, we know what we need to do to lose weight. We know what we need to do to be more financially free. We know what we need to do to be smarter. We need to do those things on a daily basis to end up to that outcome in which we desire. So it gets back to the whole identity concept versus outcome, right? Like you wanted to run the race, you ran the hundred mile or you got it done. Do you want to become an ultra runner and an endurance runner and live the life? If you do, well, you need to change your identity, right? If you run, run one race, you're not going to become you know, a high level ultra runner and it's not going to become part of your lifestyle. But of course, like you said, like you're, you know, you're a guy that, you know, you take action and you say, well, you, you do what you say you're going to do. You got it done. You know, it was very difficult. You learned a lot from it, but who knows, maybe you won't do another one. The point is, is that if you change your identity and you want that to be something that becomes part of your life and it's your hobby and it's something that you really do love and enjoy, you need to manifest that on a daily basis. Like you said, to be able to to live that lifestyle and be able to chase those goals. So I guess to, to end my spiel is the, is we, you have to do things. Uh, uh, James Clear talked about like, there's, you know, one of his friends was, you know, morbidly obese and she lost weight. And literally all she did was do all the things that a healthy person would do, eat healthy, exercise, go to sleep, get seven to eight hours of sleep, manage your stress levels. Don't go out and drink on the weekends. Like, <laughs> Go for a walk when you're on your rest days, you know, um, stay consistent in the gym, go at least three to three to five days a week, 30 to 30 to 60 minutes a day. Like, you know, hit the, hit the minimums and you, guess what happened? She lost weight and she got fit. And the reason is because she changed her identity from being a morbidly obese person to her daily habits and rituals. As we talk about on value pursuit, she lived those things that someone would, that was fit. And the outcome was that she became fit and, you know, yes, she met an outcome, but she changed her life. That's the point. She changed her life. She's a, she's a more fulfilled human now. She's healthier. She's more fit. She probably has more energy. She's able to interact with her family and friends more, provide more value to them, maybe motivate other people to lose weight too. You know, that's really why we started this. Like just that we can just impact one person on here. Like that's all Pat and I want to do. You know, this isn't for the money. It isn't for the fame. It isn't for the sponsors. Like, this is for us to provide our knowledge, connect with other like-minded people and fill a gap that does not exist and provide value in your pursuit in life. And that's what we want to do. And we hope today that what we talked about, Pat and I could go on and on and on. And we're going to have plenty of episodes. Like we said, we have people lined up. Um, we will definitely mention that once we get definitive dates on when we can have those people on. So it won't just be Pat and I, you know, talking about value pursuit per se, we will have obviously our expertise like Pat and I mentioned as well on sub, uh, prior episodes, previous episodes, but we'll also have other individuals come on and explain their take on life and their pursuit and things that have worked for them and haven't worked for them and so on and so forth. And that's what we we ultimately hope for this podcast is that we're able to provide you with just one thing. If you can do one thing and it helps you take that second step and third step and fourth step, then we did our job. And that's really all that's at the end of the day, that's what we, that's our end goal for this, for this platform. So Absolutely. thank you for the time, Pat, man. This has Absolutely. been awesome today. Yeah. And I want to ask the the listeners and those that are watching on YouTube and things like that, you know, let us know like what, what habits are you interested in changing? What are the habits that you think are the hardest? You know, what, what about this content? What do you want to hear about? And things like that. And I just wrote down, oh my gosh, I, I wrote down a ton of notes that we can keep going, but that identity is huge, but the, the concept, that final message, you know, when it comes to, Hey, valued habits, you got to figure out what they are. And then I just wrote, change your habits to change your life. You got to know what they are, but it's so powerful. What you just said, you gotta, you gotta change your identity. You know, I wrote you, you cannot focus on what's in front of you. If you keep worrying about what's behind you, the past, mm -hmm. you know, learn from the past, but don't live there, live here and live now. 
you have to identify with that which you are trying to become. Use the resources that you have and, you know, ultimately figure out what habits you have, what habits you don't want to keep doing, what habits you want to keep doing. But let us know what are those habits. So Tyler and I talk all the time and these are the things that we enjoy talking about. So we hope you are enjoying this journey as we're both taking it together and you're joining us for the ride and we look forward to conversing more and Tyler, I appreciate the time as always and I look forward to the next one, so. Likewise, brother, always All a right. pleasure. Looking forward to the next one. Take awesome. care. Bye. What's up guys, it's Tyler from reInventco. We released some new merchandise, part of our standard tee collection. We got two colorways. I'm currently wearing the dark heather gray. We also have a cardinal red. Uh, they're fitted, they're super high quality. We've got the nice reInvent logo on the front. We got a quote on the back, a lifestyle of continued growth. Um, I'm 195 pounds, six foot, so I'm wearing a large. We got small, medium, large, and XL. These are one of one. They're going really quick. We've had a lot of support. We wanna say that we'd appreciate that and appreciate the belief in this company. Get them while you can. Uh, they're $30 local pickup, Westchester, New York, and uh, $35 shipped to you. Join the movement.